mud and those heavy bikes with the tires that we have they're not so well suited for this Buckle up my friends for an extraordinary off-road motorcycle adventure in the Balkans as we travel through Croatia, Bosnia, Montenegro and Albania. A journey that pushed us to our physical limits, threw some epic challenges away and blessed us with unforgettable memories. Get ready to witness the triumphs, the breakdowns and the breathtaking landscapes that made this adventure one for the books. Often stuck in this stuff. We spent a lot of time this morning contemplating what to do, you know, looking at the weather map. You, you can definitely obsess about it and spend a lot of time on where to go and where not to go. And back and forth, we were initially set to go to the Brophy, so head north again to avoid some of the bad weather. But then Paul, he said that we're thinking about going to Tet, but not today, but tomorrow. And we're like, well, Tet's actually, if, if it's not that far away, I go on a direct route. Why not do it today? Because at the moment it still looks okay. We may still get some rain. But even if we get rained out for two or three hours, it's not a big deal. But it gets us where we wanted to go in the first place, and that's Albania. And then just take it from there. We are back at the coastline. This time is the section of the Adanska Malekstal that's in Montenegro. Sveti Stefan is the most eye-catching site in Montenegro's Batva Riviera. Initially, the island was used as a means for coastal defense. Later, in the 1800s, about 400 local families converted the island into a more traditional small village, ensuring that they maximized the limited land available, they constructed their stone houses right up to the edge. In 2007, Sveti Stefan was turned into a high-end luxury resort that attracted the rich and famous in subsequent years. After the initial closure during the pandemic, Sveti Stefan remains closed. So we're finally turning off to a smaller road do the scenic drive because the weather is better than we thought it would be and wow look at this is busy here very busy I'm not sure why that is lots of boats here <laughs> that's quite the happening place just enter the scenic road this is also one of those panorama roads so they're not always big roads they can't be small like this one here even though we bought food to have lunch on the go, this restaurant on the side of the road was just too inviting. It was run by a small family and the food was excellent. We had this heartwarming moment where Paul reminded the restaurant owner of her own son. So now we're enjoying this beautiful lake and on the small road. I mean, it's not in the best condition the road, but still a joy to buy it because of the scenery get yeah, with it. Lake Skardar lies on the border of Albania and Montenegro and is the largest lake in southern Europe. The lake and the surrounding area is not very well known and it's largely untouched by development or commercialization, at least for now. We just had to stop for the amazing view and uh, I guess the other motorcycles that we just saw passing us, uh, they're doing the same thing. <laughs> Yeah, it's not often you see other motorcycles on these uh, smaller roads. It's showing 26 degrees, somewhere between 25 and 26 degrees, it doesn't look good, but it's, uh, it's relatively warm. We're at the uh, border from Montenegro to Albania. Oh, this is where I had the friendly guy last time. <laughs> I remember this. We're heading straight for the mountains. So, 12 degrees at top and it looks awesome, awesome, awesome here. There's a little bit of sunlight coming through. The Airbnb that we booked, uh, apparently we thought had five rooms, they don't. They have enough beds, 
um, but they have no food here too because technically the place is closed the guy said and it was still on Airbnb um, we have a bit of food left um, so now we're contemplating if we uh, change location so if we're gonna stay here um, it's quite dark now and uh, it rained quite a bit too so this is the place um, I reckon we stay here cheers 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 Cheers. 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 Good thing was that we still had our yes. lunch packed that we now had for dinner. Okay guys, for an explanation, that's the potato that yeah. we got from the guy that called help uh, for us, the van. And we carried it with us all the way here to Albania. And now it's fries, french fries. <laughs> We're gonna eat it. Cool. This is the upstairs multi-bed room that some of us has to share. And then there's two other rooms downstairs. And you can hear it's raining hard, really hard. We're close to the Ted, well actually in the Ted Valley, not in the in the town. We're still sort of on the mountain pass, probably at a thousand meters elevation it was raining really hard uh yesterday uh, today it's dry but uh, we've had heavy rains the past three days so we have no idea what the tracks gonna look like also we're low on fuel <laughs> so hopefully between five bikes we have enough um to at least attempt the first section of the tet um that's the south section going down um the total length is almost 50 kilometers um with off-road riding and it gets harder towards the end also there's water crossings with all the water coming down the mountains these days we don't know what the water crossings are going to look like but also the steep inclines in sort of semi-wet surfaces there might be mud um we have no idea so we're gonna we're gonna have a look and then see if we uh how far we get today's tour is gonna take us from ted to fierza with the off-road sections at the beginning of the day. Yeah, you know, all the best to your life. Yeah. Okay, we're heading down to the valley. We're still sort of where the mountain pass is, uh, sort of high up in the mountain yesterday. At, um, let me check the elevation. At a thousand meters, we're still, and we're going down already. And it's uh, 13 degrees, so it's quite chilly, actually. If we understood correctly, there's no place to get gas. So if you ever come to this area, make sure you fuel up. Teth is a small village in Albania's accursed mountains. And just a few years ago, it was only reachable by gravel road. Now, one of the two ways to reach the village is fully paved and therefore it's a lot more accessible for tourism. There's a mini mart here, sort of in the happening area of Ted. And I asked inside if I could get some fuel and he said to wait out here. So obviously there's no gas station. Uh, maybe I have to buy it by the liter. I still have a little bit left, but it's, it's, I'm just uneasy about not having enough fuel. And wouldn't you know it, just in the container I was standing next to, there is a gas pump to get some gas before we would hit the track. Whoa. Sind wir schon wieder zurück? Und? Fahrt uns, da kommt eine große Überquerung, wo kritisch ist. Eine Flussdurchquerung? Ja. ja. Und er hat gesagt, er fährt auch 1150, er würde das nicht fahren. Ja. Haben wir fast schon mit gerechnet, dass wir irgendwie bekommen. Also da, wo es kritisch war, runter kommt man schon. Wenn ihr nicht mehr hoch müsst, ist normal kein Problem. Aber <lacht> das weiß man nie vorher. Ne? Also Piano dadurch, okay. Gut. Danke, dann viel Spaß noch. Yeah. <laughs> so the guys that we just met, uh, we saw them earlier in the in the uh, in the Ted uh, Valley Station or whatever you want to call that. 
Um, so I had to turn around after three to four kilometers of this. Whoa! from Dresden they are um, they're taking a, a, the slow ride they're probably not gonna come down here this part is quite iffy uh, just going down Jochen and I still have to go it up uh, Tom turned around in the middle of it uh, because it's loose and big gravel and we don't think we're gonna go very far but since we're already down here we're gonna have a peek until the next difficult section comes Scouted the next few meters down the down the trail, and there, they would be doable if we didn't have to go it all back again. And then we met uh, these Albanians in the in the four x four. They came all the way from the bottom, and they said it gets really, really bad. So if it's you know this is already pushing it, uh, if it gets any worse than this, there's no way we're gonna make it through there. Also, Tom is waiting up the hill, so we're gonna skip that part, skip the water crossing today, and be. Uh, be smart and <laughs> go up. There's still that washout um, that was tough to get down. We'll see if we're gonna make it up in one go or if it takes a few attempts. Unfortunately, we weren't able to ride the TED track the way we had planned to due to the unfavorable conditions and of course the fact that Thomas still had a damaged bike that was repaired, but it wasn't in the same condition as it was before we started riding these off-road tracks. So we enjoyed some more gravel roads and then made our way to the pavement. So this is the nice paved part of the descent to Tad Valley. This is what we did yesterday in the rain. This is a beautiful mountain road with like pine trees. It smells like uh, it reminds me of riding in Italy somehow. The smell of those pine trees. Uh, the sun is nice too. It's like lower in the sky now, so it looks really nice. Wow, we're still on this super curvy road and uh, the views are just spectacular here. There's huge mountains in Albania. We've got about 80 kilometers to Fierce. Uh, at the moment, we're still trying to go for it. My navigation system says an hour and a half. Google tells us it takes two hours and 15 minutes. Still don't know what's true. That means we will arrive after sunset and it will get dark. Dark enough for someone else to take the lead because I still have my uh, only have my goggles and my clear visor I forgot at home. We were riding well into the darkness and came across a few participants of the Rally Raid Albania and these guys who hey. ran out of fuel on their enduro bikes. We offered to help but there was help on the way. Uh, gasoline. 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 <laughs> gasoline. <laughs> so we could continue our journey to our final destination for the night.
the next day we were greeted by this beautiful landscape and the accommodation we had found was a complete surprise. It looked like a four-star resort that could have easily been someplace in France. The initial plan for the day was to take us from Fierze all the way to Castriot, and the beginning part would have been a large off-road section. But what we ended up doing was going into the off-road section for a little bit and then the road conditions forced us to turn around and change our plans and we ended up in Rape. Crazy story, we met another rider on his Tenere 600. He had a uh, crash with an oncoming passing car that basically still hit his pannier at full speed. All this luggage was all over the place. That's the crazy stuff that can happen here. But at the same time, we had immediate help from the locals, mechanics that helped him sort of put the uh, frame back together they welded it all and they were really kind they didn't want anything for it so that's albania for you you've got the, the crazy drivers and the people the locals that will help you we took to the road and headed north and before we entered the off-road section we took a little detour to the left into the valbona valley which lies in the albanian alps and at the end of the dead end road we found the rally raid team they had set up camp in the Valbona Valley and had a big truck and support vehicles there and we met the two Swedish guys that we were trying to help out the night before. Aha! Uh -huh. So the 16 degrees and sunshine is actually perfect for this because I'm getting really warm. So guys, we're well into the track. So far, so good. It was very rideable. We still probably have at least two thirds, half of it to go. So it's the first time one of the bikes slipped. We're about probably 30 kilometers into the off-road track. I think it's 30. I, it's really hard to keep track. I think it's about 30. Honestly, I have no idea how long it is. We were just passed by some uh, rally ATVs. So they definitely go on the same route. It's getting muddier in this section, so... Wow. So aussieht, das ist halt für die Kisten, ja. die Reifen stimmen nicht, alles, das ist alles nicht so richtig optimal. Ja. Und ich meine, selbst wenn man hier durchkommt, da kommen jetzt nur noch so eine Dinger wahrscheinlich. The moment you add water to it, it's like this. It's um, mud. And this heavy bikes with the tires that we have, are not so well suited for this. And if I'm looking around the bend, even if we make it across this thing here, it, there's a good chance this isn't it. We'll see more of this. And the whole rally team has been through here. <laughs> so I think we're gonna we're gonna turn around. Have fun. So despite the fact that we have turned around, I mean, we did get a fair amount of off-road riding. That's what we came here for. And it's probably the smart decision to do, rather than getting ourselves stuck somewhere without uh, food and power and... <laughs> really interesting to see one of these larger bikes with the right tires, lots less weight, just plow through the mud like it's nothing. This is so beautiful here and so remote too. <laughs> so yes. Wow, check this out. 
is unbelievable what this looks like. That's the benefit of going back and get to see this. It's so amazing. The colors right now. Wow. This is a very cool track. So that's the uh, medic. The medic vehicle. <laughs> From the rally. So it seems like the last person that is through the track. I mean, that'd be kind of fun to do. A rally. <laughs> Not on this bike. <laughs> After we completed the off-road section, we went back the same way we came the day before. It's a nice curvy road. We had the coolest thing. We just pulled over to stop and uh, there was a red pickup truck that we passed or we just gave him a friendly wave. Guy stopped, put it in reverse, opened the window, asked where we're from, gave us a handful of walnuts just to eat. Super cool. That's Albania for you guys. So today is our last day in Albania. We're in the middle of the northern part. So it's gonna take us a while to leave the country. We're gonna head westwards through Skoda, cross into Montenegro again. Last time we went around the lake, this time we're gonna do the coastline along the Bay of Kotor, and then we'll end up in Dubrovnik tonight if things go well. So it's a nice fresh 15 degrees sky and sunshine at 10 o'clock in the morning. We are on the E. 851 so we took this road in a few days back and we have almost 70 kilometers of just curvy roads so it's an absolute riot to ride this but as you can see there's still washouts sand patches on the road especially in the corners that's quite dangerous now with the morning light and the harsh shadows and the sunlight it's really difficult to read the road properly you don't want to hit this thing at a full lean angle and hit a sand patch, it would definitely lay it down. So we were just asking for air at this gas station. I actually didn't see any, I was going to go past it, but the, the guy pointed out the, uh, the tire place across from the gas station. He said there's a compressed air to uh, get the pressure up on the bikes. So we're at 530 meters about on, still on the E. 851. We finally made it to the border. This was the first time I had a long line at the border crossing. We're about to cross from Albania to Montenegro and it was quite warm. After some wait they told us to get into the pedestrian lane so that was a much quicker way of getting through the border patrol. So we're driving along the coastline of Montenegro. We made a change of plans, we're going straight to Dubrovnik. This is the entry point of the Bay of Kotor, and I already saw the ferry boat. Yeah, this is nicer. We had to get ourselves through a whole lot of traffic. I have a headache from all the sort of unfiltered exhaust coming out of those cars, especially the diesels. Hi! Can I, I can pay on the ferry, right? Oh, I can't pay with the... Okay. The ferry is the much quicker alternative to going around the entire bay, which takes a good two hours. We're hitting the coastal road again. It's beautiful, a beautiful day, 22 degrees. And sun is setting in about an hour. We've got less than 20 minutes to go to hit Dubrovnik. We arrived in Dubrovnik about half an hour before sunset and with a beer on our hand we enjoyed the amazing view over the Adriatic Sea and the old town of Dubrovnik. Thomas really came through with picking this amazing place because it's walking distance to the old town and we spent the entire night there, found a nice restaurant and had a chance to actually experience the old town from the inside and not just watching it from a distance. Dubrovnik is one of the most prominent tourist destinations in Croatia. It's a designated UNESCO World Heritage Site and the old town is absolutely worth a visit.
The plan for the day is to head down to Split for a little detour to Sveti Yuri, which is a one-way street, tall road up a mountain. I've been there last year and we're gonna go up it again. And then we have this beautiful place on the beach. I'm quite excited about it. Der Platz oder fahren wir noch höher nachher? Wir noch höher fahren. Wir kannst du gucken, falls da oben nicht so gleich ein Radfahrer Ja, dann bleiben wir hier. Weil oben ist der Parkplatz hinter dem Gebäude. Und dann ah ja, nee, perfekt. So, it's a nice viewing uh, place up here. It's really windy. There's the old town of Dubrovnik. Uh, it's absolutely worth it coming up here. It doesn't take very long. Single track road, you can see the old town. This is one of the best angles it's from this side, not from the cable car top. As our amazing apartment in Dubrovnik did not serve any breakfast, we decided to get breakfast on the go. We stopped at a bakery for some baked goods and we still had some coffee in our luggage. Jochen wasn't just our barista on the trip, but he's also a great location scout, making sure that he would find these amazing places for us to have the special breakfast on the beach. It's 1.30 by now, we're back on the coastline. On this day, we decided to have some seafood in a restaurant rather than doing a picnic on the trail. So we went off the main road, the main coastal road close to Makarska, and found this beautiful little town where we found the only open restaurant right on the beach. Sveti Yuri mountain in the Vyakova National Park. That round trip is going to be at least two and a half hours with some sightseeing, I suppose. Germany, yeah. Uh, would you like to pay in cash or car? A uh, car would be great. So can we go before the cars? Yes. Okay, good. You can. So after you made it through the uh, sort of foresty part, there is a section of switchbacks and hairpin turns. We have fun to ride on the motorcycle. Just have to watch traffic. Obviously there's more traffic today. And it's really windy today. You can tell up on the mountain, especially now. But look at the view, it's awesome, awesome view. But we're not anywhere close to the top yet. Through the floor. This road is fun because the scenery just changes as you uh, climb up the mountain. You got the forest, got the switchbacks. Now you just go alongside the mountain for a little bit. It's just a joy to ride this thing. So uh, we're approaching the skywalk, the platform that gives you a great view over the coastline. So you have to push a GS, it doesn't have a reverse gear. <laughs> <laughs> the Biakoa Skywalk is a horseshoe shaped lookout outside of a cliff. It has a glass walking surface and at over 1200 meters it provides an amazing view over the Adriatic Sea. What the hell is happening here? Out of the gorgeous part here. So 1300 meters, another 400 to go. It's nine degrees now. So climbing up. What's happening here? Oh, that looks. Uh, I gotta work. Oh, Jesus. Looks like a real pull there. It's gonna take a while to figure this out. <laughs> oh, yes. That looks even really more spectacular than last time. Ah, it's beautiful. There's Jochen and Thomas coming up. Jetzt mach ich endlich mal das, was ich sonst nie mache. <lacht> Mal einen kleinen Aufkleber setzen. 
Fett. So. <lacht> Keine Ahnung, weil es mir nicht so wichtig ist. Das ist der erste, den ich geklebt habe. <lacht> The Biokovo Nature Park was declared a natural park in 1981 due to its unique geomorphology, its extraordinary biodiversity and its scenic natural beauty. A 23km toll road leads to the highest point of the Biokovo Nature Park, the Sveti Yuri Peak, at 1762 meters above sea level. From the top of Sveti Jura is a panoramic view of the hinterland and the islands in the Adriatic Sea. In very good weather conditions it is possible to see the Bosnian Herzegovina mountains and neighboring Italy. So we're leaving Sveti Jura mountain. Tom looked it up, it's not the highest in Croatia, the highest in this area. Doesn't matter, pretty cool still, 1700 meters. The good thing about going down, you get a much better view of the area. The visibility is absolutely spectacular today. You can see stuff that I didn't see last time I was here. All well, these islands there, I didn't see there, any of those. <laughs> We found a nice place to stay close to the ocean and after a short swim we enjoyed the sunset at the beach. One of the coolest things was that I could park my bike down here uh, in the apartment complex and you'll see the way I had to take to get it down here. Pretty cool, huh? <laughs> so guys, uh, yesterday I was stung by a wasp under the helmet between my goggles and the, the rubber band. And uh, it's quite swollen now this morning. I can definitely tell it's worse than it was yesterday. Um, it's not the end of the world, but it's kind of annoying. <laughs> also by putting the helmet on. Um, kind of hurts on the side. It was actually stung me right in the temple here, close to the eye. So uh, let's see how long that takes <laughs> for it to heal. This will be our last full day in the Balkans and we'll be traveling from Split in Croatia to Bihać in Bosnia. If you didn't know where to look for, this place would be easy to miss. Nestled in the middle of a small town, we come to this unique place. This is the Cetina River Spring, which is famously known as the Eye of the Earth. This small body of water serves as a source for the Cetina River in Croatia, but it is popular for its amazing beauty. Divers have explored its incredible depth to over 155 meters. More challenging here. And it's up the hill. It's the gravel. The buffer, buffer in general.
So guys, this is what the shit looks like now. After I took the helmet off. Dang. Das ist noch gut. Aber vom Fahren her geht's noch, oder? Ja. ja ich habe den Offroad Dingern habe ich natürlich gar nichts gemerkt, da war ich so konzentriert. Okay. Aber jetzt wo ich den Helm abnehme, das sieht natürlich echt bitter aus. Dang. That's the old airplane. Steht da noch auf Rädern das Ding. This is the, the airfield and actually the old airplane that's sitting here. You can go inside too, uh, go on the wings it seems. So anyway, the airfield has to be nearby. We have to check that one out too. It's better for me to keep the helmet on because I look like a fucking zombie now. So you can actually go inside, which we are. Oh, this looks crazy. <laughs> Bullet holes. Hi. <laughs> Ach, der alte Kasten hier, ey. Hey, look at this. Wenn wir am Typen gehen und diese Kisten fliegen mussten, weil wenn du jetzt mal anschaust, die Einschüsse gehen halt leicht durch, ne? Ah, <laughs> cool. The Salyava Air Base is situated near the Bosnian and Croatian border. It was built as a covert Yugoslav military facility, which was carved into a mountain. So, this is the uh, the cave to go into. We'll do that in a minute. We're inside the bunker things. Okay, you gotta really watch your head here. It was an aircraft shelter during the Cold War and was constructed to withstand a nuclear attack. Abandoned in the 1990s, this underground facility offers a glimpse into a bygone area of military innovation. The sprawling tunnels are still accessible and can be explored on a motorcycle for those who dare to ride in the complete darkness. So that's the end of the line there. It's, uh, can't go any further. And it's pitch black dark. Ha! Ha! <laughs> Woo! <laughs> da musst du echt gucken, was hier für Scheiße auf dem Boden liegt, ne? Krass. Holes in the ground too. It smells like something is burning in here. Like some plastic is burning. Oh, it's a little, little bit. You have to just remember which way you went. You can always, you can turn around, that works, but you have to remember which way because it goes, it, well, it goes in and then there's different paths you can take. I've never given this to anyone, but these are the first ones I give away. 